Father, I truly do thank you for those who came out to sit at your table tonight and to be fed fresh manna from heaven. And Father, I know that you're already in our midst. You're already moving among your people. And whatever we need, Father God, we are receiving right now. And Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now remember, these 10 days are what? 10 days are prayer. And uh, Reverend Marty gave you a, a, a guideline to follow. And uh, there's no questions, just do it. Just be praying for those. I, I just I had him repeat that 95%. I couldn't believe that. 95% of unsaved people. That doesn't make very many of us saved, does it? And you have to thought, God, where's all these people going to come from that's going to come into the auditoriums? Well, they just told us where they're going to come from. There's more unsaved, unchurched than churched. Now, he got up here and he preached one of my messages, and I had three of them. I'm trying to see which one he preached. Wasn't he good? Wasn't Reverend Elaine good? They're, aren't they wonderful people? You know, they went on a trip that most of you wouldn't go on you because you'd be afraid, but they trust and believe God, and they went. And uh, one day there, uh, Elaine is going to do that. Elaine, could you two do that this Thursday night during you know, this prayer thing? Could you come and you do the service and, and give us your testimonies of what happened? You know, would you all like them to do that? Because I've been wanting them to do that. And when I was sitting there and listening to you all, carry on um god just laid that in the heart to ask you to do that i was just joking about well you were carrying on you were having a good time and what's the house of god for if it's not to have a good time all right this is the one he already preached so i'll just stick it aside all right um we're going to do the dates uh brett the one a You know, there there comes there's a time and a season for all things. And we have to be in the perfect timing of God's hand. That's not up there. And we have to be in perfect timing with God and do what God wants us to do when he wants us to do it. With all the prayer meetings that are going on right now, God won't let me enter, will not allow me to enter into them. He just won't. And he says, I've got you set apart right now I've got to teach you some things. He said, there's plenty out there that's going to do the praying. You know, and so we have to be in tune to the Spirit of God to know what to get involved in. There's not a thing wrong with prayer. I think it's the most wonderful thing in the world. But if God doesn't want you involved in that, then whatever you do isn't going to prosper. Uh, you really need to understand this. It doesn't matter what people say. Nobody's talking about me, but I'm just giving you a little bit of advice. It doesn't matter what people are saying about you. You have to be doing what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. All right? Not people, but the Spirit of God. I tell you all to dance. You don't dance. You don't pay no attention to me. So, you know, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. You know, and the Spirit's not moving on you, telling you to do it, so you don't do it. You understand what I'm saying here? We have to be totally doing this, especially right now with what God is doing across this land. We have to hear the voice of God all the time, just not every now and then. All right, this morning I fumbled on this, these dates, so we're going to go over these dates, all right? So Rosh Hashanah began on Friday the 15th at sunset, and it ended tonight at sunset. Sun's already set, right? So it's over, right? Now, Rosh Hashanah, or head of the year, is when God does new things on the earth and in the church. Now, Rosh Hashanah is one of those, and I sent you out a post on this. But because I fumbled this thing this morning, I thought I'd try to smooth it over. <laughs> Rosh Hashanah is one of those divine seasons that you just can't miss out on. It's a make or break season. And I, I've been warning you, you know, God is judging his people. Where are you going to end? And God told some of you in here you were judged. And the ones who said you were already judged, you passed the test. Now, I'm hoping and believing that the rest of us have all passed a test too. All right, because it's ahead of the year in God's calendar, how you enter in enter the year in Rosh Hashanah will determine how we finish the year. It's a season of the gr greater glory. And you, God's really been talking to me about this glory drop, and he said it's going to be the greatest thing the body of Christ has ever witnessed. 
uh, you know, and, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss this for anything. You know, and I'm not saying I might, that I might, I'm not saying I won't miss it because we never know. We might mess up at the last minute and everybody needs to understand that you could mess up and miss out on God. This is a time when you have to walk really super close to God. You have to be hearing his voice and you have to be doing what he's telling you to do at the time he's telling you to do it. All right. September during Rosh Hashanah is when the next huge seasonal portal opens up. And that prophetic word that God gave us uh, the other other day, Wednesday, I think it was, he said to, that we will bring the people up into the portals of heaven. Remember that? And he said there they're going to get changed. It is a time, he, he said we would do that. We, we would be so full of God that then we would minister to these other people and we would bring them up to the, I thought that was awesome, but he said the portals of heaven and there they would be cleaned up and go forth and, and bring the rest of the harvest in. All right, it is a time when new things occur and new paradigm shifts happen on many levels. Often major world events affecting you and me occur in this season. There is also a new level of the glory of God released during this time. Did God call it his divine glory? You know what he told us? It's going to be his divine glory that he's going to drop. You're all looking at me like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Holy Spirit, just let them remember what they just heard tonight. <laughs> and we cover it with the blood so that the enemy can't steal the word. All right, during the fall scene is when the books of heaven are open over your life and things are decided for the next 12 months over your life. And I looked that up and the fall season lasts for the next two months. But during this fall season is when the books of heaven are open over your life and things are decided for the next 12 months over your life. That's why it's important to seek God during this time so that everything in your life is aligned with heaven so that the fullness of what God intended for your life and destiny is fully realized in the year ahead and the enemy's delays in the court of heaven are overruled. You know where God has been promising us things we haven't gotten them yet? He's saying here that um, the fullness of what God intended for your life and destiny is fully realized in the year ahead and the enemy's delays in the court of heaven are overruled. It's a season of new beginnings on God's calendar where all things from the past year are taken into account. You see that? God's looking at what you did in this past year and, and he's taken all that into account. Yom Kippur also occurs in September. Yom, Yom Kippur is a day of fasting, prayer, and repentance for the Jews and also now for the Gentiles. All right, that begins on Sunday, September the 24th at sunset and ends Monday, September the 25th at midnight. It's a time to reflect on the past 12 months to see where we are headed and make the necessary changes to stay on course for the destiny of our lives, family, and nation. All right, this September will be unlike any other any other because so many Kairos events are still covering, converging at the same time. There's a whole lot going to converge at one time. And, you know, this is why God says we have to be in, in season, out of season, because, you know, if you don't have your mind focused on God, this could blow your mind. And, and you miss really what God is trying to do through you. Each season carries with it, with it a potential greater glory and a greater blessing and harvest. Read that again. Each season carries with it a potential greater glory and a greater, greater blessing and harvest. During this season, the books of heaven and the books of destiny are opened over people, ministries, and nations. And Daniel 7.10 says, A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were open. Right now your book is, is opened. And God is reading what you have accomplished and what you've done. And he's determining how the next year of your life is going to occur. You know, what's going to happen. That's why many even fast and pray and make amends and seek the Lord like never before worldwide, especially in Israel right up to Yom Kippur, as there is a sense of divine timing and destiny connected with his feast. 
I really do believe with every fiber of my being, this 10, 10 days is right at the perfect time with God. It, you know, it's in God's timing, and great and mighty things are going to happen. If we carry out, they, they gave you a handout, and then we put this in the bulletin last week. Everything's before you, so you can't say you didn't know what to do. It's also the head of the year as new assignments, promotions, and blessings are released for the new year for those aligned properly as the Supreme Court of Heaven meets to determine our destinies for the next 12 months. It's the head of the year. And remember God said, we are going into a new beginning. Old things are passed away and everything before us is going to be brand new. I don't believe that a lot of people believe that. I still see you walking in your old mindsets and in your old ways. You're going to have to get get it together. Either you're going to spend another year in the misery that you just went through, or you're going to spend another year perfectly happy, and every blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to be bestowed upon you. Everything that God's ever promised you is going to be given to you in this next year. God wants to speak into your lives just like he did just to Reverend Marty and Reverend Elaine right now. If you don't hear God's voice, how do you know what to do? And God will confirm when I said to them because they had the prophetic gifting also. God will confirm all this to them. You know, I was in my study a couple of weeks ago and maybe a month ago now, at least strike a time, and, and God said, I want you to tell this person this. <laughs> I, so I got a piece of paper, you know, and started typing, and it was all about when Jesus was going to come back again. And I said to Christopher, I said, why would God have me do that? I wonder why I had to do that. And lo and behold, I got an email, I think it was yesterday, and this person's one, trying to find out when Jesus will return again. And, and God said to me, you tell this, you know, this person that my son is coming back. And then he goes on to tell him other things. And I thought, wow. But I'm saying, God, why, are you, why did you have me do that? You know, I just do what God asked me to do. So this is the way God works. This person's been searching, you know, asking this one, that one, and the other one, searching the word to when Jesus is coming back again. And God said he's going to come. He is coming back again. But nobody knows when. Amen. You know, do you want to be used by God or do you not? Do you really want to set the, you know, there's, there's captives in the house of God. And you know, when every time I watch these people sing, you know, that, that passion, it, those are all uh, college kids there that had gotten saved. I mean, you can tell they love the Lord when they're singing. Somebody had to get that started. And now, you know, in that area, the, the, the uh, college kids are being saved all over the place. Somebody paid the price for that to happen. All right, so God told us this morning we had to pay a price, right? And this afternoon, he put Catherine Kuhlman to my remembrance. If you know Catherine Kuhlman's story, you know, God used her mightily. She was mightily anointed of God. Then she fell in love with some pastor, and she got married. They got married, but he really wouldn't let her preach or minister she would sit you know back here while he ministered and she said she in her book she said she just felt herself slowly dying because she wasn't being used and she was sitting there one night and she got up went out into the alley she said all right god i'll do what you ask me to do and she left her husband they loved each other dearly but god said she had to leave her husband he sent her flowers and did all kind of things, and it just tore her heart out. But she did not go back to her husband, and God just used her mightily. That was a dear price to pay, to walk in the anointing. Are you listening here? What if God asked you to, to separate? You know what I'm saying? You know, you have to really think of all things in your life. What if God would ask me to do this? What would God, would I really do it? I do that all the time. You know, we say, well, we'll just go ahead and do it. No, you wouldn't. No, you won't, you don't know what you're going to do until you're faced with the situation. Then is when you decide what you're going to do. Amen. So, you know, God asks us to do 
things and we either obey or we don't obey. And if we obey, then we, we stay in the anointing. If, and if we don't, don't obey, then we lose the anointing. It's just that simple. All right. What, uh, what I would like to do at this given time is, um, you all have had a chance to decide whether or not you're going to follow God. You, are you going to get out of your sin? And are you going to follow God? Or are you going to stay, stay in your sin and lose God? Because God's dealt with us long enough with that. And so right now, God just told me to stop and have communion right now. I really want you to take a few minutes um, to search your hearts. Father, thank you for your uh, invitation to follow you right here, right now. Thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Every commandment you give us, we know we can't keep, but it, within the commandment is the grace to obey it. So we say yes and amen, God, to whatever you want in this next season. And so a representative of that, your broken body was the grace to give us the ability to do what you want us to do. So we remember you. We take this bread and in remembrance of you and your broken body. And Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross for the remission of our sins, Lord. We thank you that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful to forgive us of our sins, Lord. We want to walk with holy hands, pure hearts, pure minds, Lord. And that can only be accomplished through your blood, through your precious, precious blood. One drop is so very, very precious. And we drink your blood, Lord, to have communion with you, to be empowered by your Holy Spirit, Lord. We drink your blood, not only for the remission of our sins, Lord, as we repent before you, but for healing, the healing that's in your blood, not only healing physically, healing emotionally, and spiritually, Lord, we just give you thanks for your blood. We thank you for this time, this precious, precious time of communion with you, Lord. And we say, yes, Lord, yes, we will follow you all the days of our lives, Lord. Come what may, we've counted the cost, and we, we are yours. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, before you start coming up for the, you just a second, I, God just told me to share something with you. You know, when God asked me to marry my second husband, I did not want to do that. I fought him tooth and nail about that. And finally I said, God, what's going to happen if I do obey you? And you, we were, we were having really great meetings here. Miracle after miracle, the church was always packed out. People were coming from everywhere to come and sit under the anointing and receive whatever they had need for. I said, God, if I obey, what's going to happen? He said, when you make the announcement, you're going you're to lose half the congregation. And the day you get married, you'll, only, you'll lose everybody but a handful. He never told me that the anointing was going to wane, no. But I did know I was going to lose the church, you know, the people. And finally I said, all right, Lord, I'll do it. But he, he reminded me, he says, you're in this to save a soul. And this soul needs to be saved. It was not an easy task. In fact, months into it, I said, well, a couple of years into it, I said, Father, why did you ask me to do this? He said, I, I said, why didn't you tell me what I was going to go through? He said, if I would have told you ahead of time, you would not have done it. And I need this soul saved so there you go what are you willing to give up what are you willing to give up 
We spent years in this church with barely nobody in it. And after a bit, the anointing waned just about all together because of the sin nature in the man. But God got him saved. And he went to heaven. In fact, he had two trips to heaven before he finally died. He, he, you know, he, he died two times, third time that he went on to be the Lord. So what are you willing to give up? What's holding you back from truly following God? It's your flesh. And you don't want to give up certain things. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to embrace the cross and to know you in the fellowship of your sufferings, God. As we die to what is lesser, we look forward to that resurrection of what's better. Thank you, God, for the fellowship of your sufferings. We embrace the cross. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. We look for that supernatural encounter as we say yes and obey you in taking communion and stepping into our destinies in Jesus' name. You know, it's every shepherd's uh, job. It, it always has been, but right now it's very, very important that the shepherds lead their people, their sheep, into the truth. And God is not sugarcoating anything right now, I've noticed. But I love you people. You come back for another little smack every service. <laughs> little sheep, come on, during in, what's she going to say to me today? <laughs> Amen. You know, that that's, you, you, you kids, you and kids are just really trying to grasp hold of who Jesus is and, and what your position is in him. You'll look back over these years and you'll laugh and say, I was so dumb. I was older and I look back and said, I was so dumb. <laughs> we just don't understand what God is doing. And he keeps telling us to quit leaning to our own understanding that, that we can never figure God out. And isn't that the truth? You who are older in Christ, isn't that the truth? You, you cannot figure God out. I don't know about you, but at the time I think I know what he's going to do. He takes another turn. And, you know, and it isn't where he was taking me at all. And uh, we are going in, in, in new paths, and God is doing new things in all of our life. Um, it is a brand new year, and like I told you, you should feel the sadness in the atmosphere. If you're walking in the Spirit, you'll feel the sadness in the atmosphere of, uh, because the people in the house of God are not yielding themselves to God. And, you know, God said the prodigals are coming back. And he told me yesterday the prodigals are going to be more anointed than the ones who stayed in the house. And that, that is sad, too. Because we sit here and we keep eating and eating and eating at God's table. But we don't really get filled, you know. And then the ones that wandered out, they have found out, wow, I really messed up. And they're going to come back into the house of God. And God's are going to be mightily anointed. So don't be hard. Don't be judging the prodigals. You, you keep your nose on your face. <laughs> let the prodigals keep their nose on their face. And let God stay in control. All right, do you all take all taking your communion now? All right, let's go to the next one, Brett, dear advancing ones. Now, this here is Chuck Pierce. Last Sunday, they had a, you know, every weekend they're having a big meeting. And um, there were some prophetic words here that I thought that we should hear. And Chuck said, this is a week to swing wide the gates and invite the king to establish the way into 5784. We want him to lead us and be the head at the head of the year. In this pie decade of decreeing, we want our speech to form the pathway to miracles and harvest. 
Then he said, Sunday celebration service was such an amazing time of prophetic decoration and understanding the power of the spoken word. I declare you will receive and move forward with the prophetic anointings of Revelation, seer, watchman, and harvester. Now, Chuck goes on to say, as I shared yesterday, which was Sunday, Proverbs 8, 34 and 35 are powerful verses to declare. If you wait and guard the door of my entrances and long to hear a word for every day, joy will break forth within you and the fountain of life and favor will pour, will pour forth around you. That was Proverbs 8, 34. You know, the other... Day I said last week or something, I said, Dad, I said, God, I'd like to have a word for the day. He gave me one word. And so now instead of giving me, you know, a paragraph, he's been giving me one word, but they're powerful one words that he's been given. So I said, I'm going to have to be careful how I word things from now on. <laughs> uh, he says, our celebration service was filled with the spirit of prophecy. Here are a few words you can meditate on and speak forth into your atmosphere as we prepare for head of the year. And the word is, there is a new breath coming to you. And then God goes on to say, this is a time that I'm going to give you victory over that python spirit that has come to stop the breath of God from flowing through you. There are those with breathing issues that I'm getting ready to heal because the breath of God is stronger than the attack of the enemy where that python thing has come and tried to choke it out and tried to stop you from the purpose and destiny I have for you. This is a time you will have victory over that for my power is stronger than the power of the enemy. Now, how many of you can honestly say that right now you're struggling going forth? It just seems like something's blocking you and you, you can't, you know God's telling you to move forward, but you can't move forward. There's just some, there's a, there's a blockage there. And this is what God's talking you. And if you don't have that, thank God you don't. All right. Then God goes on to say, let the breath of God come, even as it did on the days of the early church. When the breath of God entered them, they became powerful in the spirit. There is a new breath coming to you. You are not in that last season, and shortness of breath has to go. Let my breath come in and energize you for this season. This is a time to call forth Lazarus out of the grave. For you have said it is too late and too far gone, but I am releasing a cry out of my people. That same cry that I released when I said, Lazarus, come forth. God just gave us a prophetic word to teach about Lazarus coming forth. If you really see what, you know, people are doing, if they're really in the spirit, they're all on the same wavelength with God. They're all saying the same thing. And, you know, we have to make sure that we're following the voices that God wants us to follow and not get caught up in just any voice. It has to be God's voice. And, and if you're, the people are really walking in this, you know, if we all are walking in the spirit, all the shepherds, then we're, we should all be hearing the same word. It shouldn't be one word here and one word there. It should all be the same word because God is not a God of confusion. He just said that. And he doesn't bring confusion into the camps. All right. Then God said, out of your spirit in this hour and at this day, I am releasing a cry that says, Lazarus, come forth. I am writing a new chapter. Cast down your agendas and wad up your outlines. The yellow pad that you have used is useless this season because I am coming. I am coming in a way that you least expect to show you that I am the author and finisher of your life and of your book. Take your topic sentence and cast it under your feet. Remove your topic paragraph and stop that chapter because I've come to refine and redeem what you have written. In other words, what you plan on doing, God isn't going to make it because <laughs> I'm going to do a new thing. The enemy has, how many of you even know right now, you don't know what you're going to be doing. You're just sitting and waiting on the voice of God because you're, you're, there's no clarity right now. And, and really, your your faith is being tested right now, too. Are you going to be still and wait till you hear the voice of God? Or you just think, well, i got to do something and then mess up. You don't have to do anything unless God is speaking to you. This is very important. 
this is what God is saying. It's very important that you understand this. He said too many of his people just think they have to be doing something. They're doing things that he's not called you for to do. All right, God said, the enemy has whispered in your ear long enough, but today the still small voice behind you will break the whispering of the evil one and will light a path before you. Redemption and recovery are in your hands. Claim them and claim them now. The last chapter of your life has not been written. Are you Don't let the devil tell you you're done. Because God, God, God said this. It hasn't been written yet. I am writing a new chapter, a new history. I am going to cause you to rise up and write. What I showed you so long ago that you thought would never happen is because you had not gotten into that chapter of your life yet. Are you listening here? But I am opening the door and I'm opening the pages to the next chapter. So this is not the time to hold back. This is the time for a fresh new vision. I'm going to cause you to see what you saw so long ago, but thought it was too late, that you had missed the best that I had for you. The best is not behind you. The best is in front of you. And I talked to a lot of people lately. They're just so discouraged that they just believe they miss God or, or you know, what God spoke isn't even the truth. You have to be still and know that he's God. 15 years ago, he told me to tell the people the glory is coming. I was excited. <laughs> then his next words, words to me were, don't grow weary in telling them that. He didn't tell me it was going to be 15 years down the road. And what, for the past four years, he said, my glory is going to fall in the fall, drop in the fall. And each fall, I think it's going to, that's the fall. But I know that I know that this is a fall that God has, and God hasn't said this is a fall. There's just something in my spirit, man, saying this is it. This is a time. And, you know, I know a lot of people get discouraged and they say, well, that wasn't even God. I don't care if you believe the word or not. You know, if you just let it, it'll prove itself out. But don't let it prove itself out when you've missed it because you pushed it aside. I lost my place. Let me take my pen and let me write the new chapter for your life. And know that I'm going to water you and the horse you rode in on. You come drink first and then bring all your horses to let them drink deeply because I'm going to fill it all up. That didn't make too much sense to me, but this is what Chuck Pierce said. You know, somebody there said. All right, the word Lord came from Barbara Went Went Trouble and Tim Moore, Keith Pierce, and Chuck Pierce. You know. It doesn't matter what God did to you in your past. God's doing a brand new thing. And you know, and he and he told us, he said, well, he told me, he said, you know, everybody's looking for the glory to look one way, and it's not going to look that way. The, the, some are going to miss it because they want it to look a certain way, and it's not going to look that way at all. And so we have to be very careful that we don't put try to put God in a box and tell him what it should look like. And like God's been telling us for years now, the glory's already in this church. We just really don't know what we're looking for. He said, it isn't here in all of its fullness, but it is here. And I know it is, but I want all the fullness. I'm a little bit greedy. <laughs> you know, God told me one time, he said, you settled for a second best time, which you'd had the very best. And you know, and and so now I want the best thing God has for me. I just don't want the little crumbs that fall down. I want everything that God has for me. We have to understand, church, that this true this is very important time right now. This Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all that is a very important time in our lives, because, like God said, the books are open, and now He's rewriting our next chapter. What's He going? What's your chapter going to look like? I don't know about you, but I search myself all the time as I don't want to fool, fool myself into believing I'm someplace in God that I'm not. And I'm always saying, God, please, you know, let me know if I step out of the path that you have my feet upon. Somebody say, well, that's doubt and unbelief. No, I, to me, it's, it's a secure, secure thing. It's knowing that I know that I know that I'm where God wants me to be doing what God wants me to do. I had man 
tell me two times what to do and it messed me up. I mean, people in the church, oh, this is what you need to be doing. And so because they told me that I did it and two times they messed me up, man ain't going to tell me again what to do. You, you know, you have to know who, what God's saying to you. It's your life. And if and God did call you, and so if he called you, he's equipped you, and he's going to continue to speak into your life and tell you exactly how to go. Are you understanding this? And Marty, you, and God said, you had the gift of prophecy, and you're holding it in. He said, you need to let it out, because many people he wants to speak to through you are missing out on God, because you are not quite sure that it's really God that's speaking through you. And, and, and Marty, the whole, you should feel the Holy Spirit. You need to know that God has put that gift in you and he's increasing that gift every day. And he said he's, gonna, he's using you. He wants to use that gift of prophecy that whenever you go out, the multitude will be saved just because of what you allow God to speak into their lives. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, you have to just let God speak through you. Please do that. Elaine, smack him on the head for me if he doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes we need a, a big swift kick to wake ourselves up, get woke up to know that God is working, trying to work through us and we won't let him because we're so afraid we're going to mess up. Marty, don't be like that. Don't be afraid of messing up. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but don't be because I used to be like that a lot. And I felt, well, I'm just going to go out to God. I'm just going to do what you want me to do. And even when I give a, a harsh prophetic word, I'll go to the person and say, was that God? They said, it's all God. That's where I'm at. But when I'm giving, I said, wow, I, I'm glad that's not me getting that word. <laughs> you know? And so we, we have to know that we know that we know, Marty, that God has set us in the place that we're in and that we are the man of the hour. And, you know, the men are so lost. And they need somebody who has confidence in God that God can send forth and bring them into the fold. All right? If, uh, your, your wife can't do it. The men are tired of listening to women. Their women messed them up. They need a man who is filled with the Spirit of God that's going forth with the truth in his lips to speak life into their lives. All right? These days of all are wonderful. Uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of dreams, a lot of visions from God, and they're all really good at what God's going to be doing. And I've seen us, you know, different ones in here. You're out there ministering, and, and the glory of God's just all around you, and, and multitudes are, are coming towards you to receive the crisis in you. I, God just shows me what you people are going to be doing. But see, I can't force you to believe that. You know, it, you, your heart has to be open to receive from God. And you, know, and then go forth and do what he's calling you forth to do. And I see some of you sitting and look at me like, really? Yeah, really? Really? You know, and I didn't have anybody to teach me. But God's placed you young kids, you know, under me to be taught the ways of the Father. And then walk in them. Quit allowing the enemy to override what God is trying to do in your life. All right? Now, God said he wants to send a thunder and a lightning in this hour. And if you really want the thunder to hit you, God said, if you come to the altar, it's going to hit you tonight. And you're going to be changed. And you'll never go back to your old lifestyle. And this is a time that the thunder is being sent into, into the people who truly want to follow God with all their heart. So the altar's open for, this is the altar call.